Good morning, everybody. We have evaded two frosts so far in early October, but it looks like this is it. We're definitely gonna get hit either Thursday night or Friday night of this week because they're calling for lows in the low 30s. So I thought I would do one last update on the garden before the frost hits. So without further ado, let's take a look. Now, one of the first things I wanna point out is how insane these flowers are. The colors are so vibrant and it truly feels like they are putting on one last hurrah before the frost comes. Now, folks have told me that the lower angle of the sun in the autumn definitely affects the way that we perceive color in the garden, but a lot of these things definitely have some renewed life in them after the heat of the summer is over. So you can see here, these were nasturtiums that were planted early, early this spring, and they have bloomed all season, but they are just putting on a ton of blooms right now. My marigolds are still going strong. I've got both flamenco and strawberry blonde over here. And these are some of my favorites. These are signet marigolds, or you'll see them referred to like the gem series as a very famous one of these. Now don't mind my poor little summer squash here. So this was a late planting of summer squash and it's starting to succumb to some disease, but it, it is still producing and will continue to do so up until the frost. So in this bed and the raised bed behind me, I've got predominantly cool season crops planted. My spinach, my radishes, my turnips, a lot of assorted lettuces, some endive and some cabbage are in this bed. And then back here, I'm doing a little experiment with some onions that supposedly can be overwintered in my climate. So we'll see how that goes. And this bed is just kind of a mess at this point. I've got carrots, I've got a bunch of cosmos that are reseeding. I've still got some Durango marigolds here that are blooming like crazy. but. One of the most interesting things from this year has been this toothache plant. So I started these from very, very tiny seeds early in the season and transplanted them out here. And there were, I think about eight plants. And you can see the area that this has covered. This thing is really interesting because besides being just kind of cool, this is the bullseye toothache plant. These will actually, if chewed, kind of produce this numbing, tingling sensation in your mouth, which is really unusual. It's become quite popular in upscale bars to offer alcoholic drinks where you chew on one of these and then do the drink and it's this really unusual sensation. But I'm actually using these because of their medicinal benefits. So as the name indicates, you can use these for your toothache or gum pain or any kind of like abscess in the mouth, they will help. They also have antiseptic properties and supposedly are immune boosting. So I've been drawing these, I've made a tincture with them, and overall I've just been really impressed with <laughs> how well this has grown. Now this has been one of my really enjoyable experiments this year. I've been wanting to grow loofa gourd for several years and finally got around to doing it this year. This is two plants that I planted on this side of the trellis and you can see how they've just grown to cover this whole archway. They're extremely productive, putting on these giant fruit all over the plants. And as these dry down, they can be used as loofahs for scrubbing and such. This is big blue salvia. This has been a honeybee magnet. And tucked in here, we've got freckles lettuce. My kohlrabi is pretty close to maturity. I've got purple and I've got some green ones tucked back in there. This calendula has bloomed all season. Some red Chinese cabbage. And this is a red chard. This is called Joy's Midnight and it keeps this color all season long. This is Casper Kale. And interestingly, this seems much more resistant to cabbage worm damage than the Lacinato or Dinosaur Kale type. So you can see my Dinosaur Kale over here. Look at the damage the cabbage worms have done. They obviously prefer to eat this one. And my Casper kale has some damage, but you can see most of these leaves up here are unscathed and it tastes great. This is one of my beds that is predominantly cool season crops. So I've got some purple broccolis, a purple kale, some red stemmed mizuna, 
frilly mustards, escarole endive, a uh, little radicchio there, some lettuce, and some baby cauliflower. Over here is a treasure island sweet potato. So these are supposed to be ornamental and edible, so have decent sized and flavored roots. As soon as the frost comes and kills these tops off, I will be digging those. This is my Verde di Taglio chard. Not nearly as beautiful as the bright lights, but man, is this a good tasting chard. Highly recommend this one for flavor. Some more little cabbages tucked in here. These are the tiara cabbages and they're small. They're like a two to four pound head at maturity, but they mature very, very quickly. Borage is blooming like crazy again. This kind of all died back and now it's reblooming. These are some walls. They are paprika peppers. We use a lot of smoked paprika, so I'm hoping we can smoke and dry these for paprika powder. The last of my Mad Hatter peppers here. And I've got a late planting of carrots. Hopefully I'll be able to overwinter these. Now back here in the main part of the garden, I have mainly cool season crops and cover crops. I've got a few warm season crops left, um, some peppers and a few bush beans, but I pulled out everything pretty early so I could get my fall crops in. Now here I've got Chinese cabbage and it was one of the very first fall crops to mature. Um, I started them from seed early July, transplanted them out mid-August, and now we're in mid-October and they are pretty much all filled out and harvestable at this point. I mentioned a few of my peppers left in here. I still got my standard jalapenos planted. My purple bell peppers are still producing like crazy. These will have to be picked too before tomorrow night. You can see over here, I've got hoops over my green beans. I actually covered these with frost cloth once already and they didn't and I didn't need to because we didn't get the frost but these are derby green beans and this is an older variety but I have been really really impressed with this this year this is my late planting so this was done at the beginning of August and these things have just produced like crazy you can see in here as I mentioned lots of mixed cover crops there's a good planting of cilantro there we got tiller radish over here mixture of tiller radish and buckwheat back there got just a small planting of shell peas here and i was a little worried about these because i planted them what felt like pretty late to be doing fall peas i planted them on august 5th it was quite hot and dry for most of August and even into September, and I did not know how these were gonna turn out. Luckily, these have been quite productive. They're putting on some beautiful peas, and the only problem now is I wish I would have planted about triple this amount. Got my early fall planting of beets done on August 5th. Beets have been really happy this fall they're actually doing better for me now than they did in the spring we have assorted kales look at the color on that lettuce this is a hungarian variety called dark rodin and this one is red velvet <laughs> my sad little cabbage worm eaten cabbages hopefully these guys make it out of this and then some lovely pak choy. So I've got my cauliflower planting over here. I peeked the other day and these are just starting to form the teeny tiniest little heads. You may have seen in last week's video, we have pretty much all the pumpkin and winter squash harvested. And now my greenhouse is acting as a curing room. <laughs> and last but not least, my castor beans are taking over the world. Now these are frost tender and I will lose them in a couple of days, but <laughs> man, they are impressive plants. So that's how the garden looks just before the frost in the fall. And for more garden updates like this, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.